This is CFM 56-5B which belongs to Airbus A320 and in today's video we'll take a look on the uh, draining system of uh, this engine and part of it is this fin down here. This is drain mast and actually this is end of uh, a draining system and thanks to this drain mast we can find out if there is any sort of uh, a leak from uh, behind of the components uh, which are installed on the gearbox but uh, to show you it more in the detail and try to explain uh, its function we need to go under the sea duct so let's take a look at it Here we have our drain mast and it is made out of let's say several components this is a collector tank but we'll get to it a little bit later on uh, collector tank is on the right side in flight direction and uh, on the left side the components are connect directly to the drain mast and all those tubes uh, lead directly inside and uh, whatever comes out of it leads overboard so whenever you have a leak from behind some component uh, on the left side it is uh, for example this front one is from the return valve uh, the middle one that one is basically one which cause uh, oil let's say oil leak uh, the most of the time because that leads from the overspill of the oil and this one all the way in the back that's connected to the uh, fuel oil heat exchanger uh, to a hydraulic control unit which is over here and uh, the last go to seal which is under the C duct the one above that's uh, one which leads actually to the collector unit that leads to a fuel pump and then on the right side we have our collector uh, tank and that one actually collects uh, the leaks from the component all around mostly on the right side except uh, the fuel fuel collector which is over here that one leads to the fuel pump which i already show you which is over here uh, those collector tanks collects leaks from behind of the components so uh, if we look over here this is our starter and you have a space between a component and accessory gearbox and uh, you can have of course a leak uh, either from the component or from the gearbox that leak is collected thanks to those lines and they lead uh, in this case a starter leads to this one then we have for example IDG which is all the way here that one leads to uh, one in the middle and the uh, very last one this one that leads to hydraulic pump so this is more or less a quick description so if you see a sort of leak you need to find out from where this leak is coming from uh, and uh, yeah investigations start from that point it is quite harder over here because everything leads to the one connection and uh, yeah you have sort of certain procedures how you can find from which connection uh, the leak is coming from uh, and it takes a bit of time but we can compare it with um, for example PV 1100G and on this engine you have drain mast installed on the core why it is on the core uh, well basically all the components are installed on the core like accessory gearbox from which more or less uh, are collected all the leaks from behind the drive shaft or from behind the components so here you don't see any collector unit here it is directly uh, connected to the component for example a fuel control and pump unit or to a hydraulic pump so basically every component which is installed on the gearbox uh, has uh, such a drain tube which leads to the section which is under the component and then 
it is sent overboard. That's that way we will very quickly find out from where the leak comes because every hole on the drain mast has a name next to it so you can very easily find out from where fuel hydraulic or oil coming from so this is our drain system and thanks to that we are doing the leak checks and one extra example for you guys regarding the drain mast this is a gen x which belongs to boeing 787 and here as well you have drain mast which has a exact port for exact uh, component so on each side you can find the name of the component towards which uh, the drain tube leads so this is another uh, manufacturer different approach but still you have direct answer from where that uh, fluid is coming from so, this was gen x and Boeing 787. Okay, and in today's video we'll take a look uh, a bit closer on this collector unit, how it works, uh, how, it, how it holds on the engine and yeah, I'll tell you more or less everything about it. What is this uh, drain manifold actually good for? Well, it collects uh, uh, small leaks or the leaks which coming from a different components. For example, here we have starter, here we have the EPU, which is a IDG pad unit, uh, and here we have hydraulic pump. And all the way on the back side, this is a part of, uh, in here we are collecting fuel from uh, the fuel pump. So each, each uh, component has its own cavity. Once it is full, it will leak or it will flow into the collector tanks we have two of them we have one for front section for hydraulic and oil and the back which is for uh, fuel on the ground it collects this fluid and once it get in the air actually airborne uh, and the airplane hit uh, 200 knots the fuel and oil will be uh, drained overboard thanks to pressure valve which will then admit the ram air to pressurize the holding tanks and discharge the accumulated fluid overboard through the drain mass. And if you have inspection for the leaks, uh, each cavity has its own uh, check port. So you just press this button or this uh, valve and it will drain all the fluid like you can see here out. And once you collect some fluid there, you know that you had a leak and you need to inspect uh, further uh, how big is that leak and but that's a whole nother story so uh, if you have inspection for the leaks through this through this ports uh, you will check if there is any fluid and then you continue further with your uh, inspection so yes this is how it works if uh, whenever you have inspection for it you need to press it and you will get information how much fluid is collected inside yeah so this is how it is this is how it look since we have started out i can show you how this drain system works so uh o-ring is of course on the drive shaft and as well on the surface of the component in this case starter uh, if you have any sort of leak in this area it will get in this hole right here and that hole leads to our collector unit so this exact one is for the starter and it's also written down there and i explained it before and how uh which one is for which but exactly now you can see from where this fluid is collected and uh, uh, how it is then sent to a collector unit so this is how it works and uh this is what it is good for Okay, we can start with removal of our drain module and uh, that means that we need to remove each and every uh, pipe which leads to it and that take a bit of time. And meanwhile you're watching my colleague to remove all connections, uh, I would like to explain one more thing and that is why actually we need such a, a draining system. 
All these fluids which a draining system collects like fuel, oil and hydraulic are flammable. And in case of leak, you don't want to have such a fluid collected inside of the fan cells and waiting to be uh, spill out somehow. We need to lead them overboard and exactly for this reason we have this draining system to not have a contamination inside of the fan cells because in case of fire we'll have a huge problem to extinguish this fire with extra fluid which can be inside of the fan cells. And the second reason I already explained, it helps us to identify the leak as soon as it appears, which means that it reduces the time of the troubleshooting. Okay, that's about it. And meanwhile, we remove all the connections and all three bolts which holds the module on the place. And unfortunately, we found one small surprise. So we pulled, we pulled the collector unit, uh, but the uh, problem is that the bracket which holds it on the gearbox uh, been cracked so we need to replace it luckily we have one on stock and yeah now we need to remove the remainings from the transfer gearbox so yeah that's the next step first we need to change the bracket and then we can install the unit this little bracket causes a bit of issue because uh, it is installed on transfer gearbox and transfer gearbox is nor not normally replaced on the line. And to find the values and if we actually can lose the nut without causing other problems, we need to browse through the component maintenance manual which is part of the engine manual. But in the end we found every, every information which we need and we was able to install the bracket without issues, find the proper torque and now we can install the unit itself. And actually this bracket is example of issues which we sometimes face. One small thing like a broken bolt or broken bracket can lead to hours of searching for the answers and uh, this can change simple uh, replacement to several hours of struggle and this kind of things are hard to explain to uh, management for example and back to our installation we connect almost every line which leads to unit and we install all three bolts which holds it on a place of course we're not but we didn't tie it yet because if you ever install the lines on the unions, it is not always easy and it can be tricky. So we need to have a bit of movement with the unit. Whenever we are sure that every uh, line is installed on the unit, only then we start so. with the torquing of every connection and of course bolts with the nuts which hold it on the engine. Či to náhodou nerobia nejaký protiplak trochu, vieš, to sa... That's all about engine, the draining system. If you have any questions, write them down in the comments below. Uh, as always guys, I would like to ask you to don't use this replacement for your maintenance manual, but always use latest documentation released by manufacturer. Big thanks to Austrian Allies that they let me record all these videos for you. Big thanks to each and everybody for watching my videos and especially to uh, members. That's all from my side. My name is Tomáš. This was Recar Maintenance with Zeto and I will see you on next video. Bye.